So how are real estate agents compensated? And in particular, how are realtors compensated? Uh, you can check my other videos about comparing and contrasting the difference between a real estate agent and a realtor. They're both not synonyms. But anyway, that's an, a different topic for another day. So the question is, how is a realtor compensated for the professional services that they render to a client? And in the, this video, I'm mostly talking about buyers. Uh, so. Normally, a buyer will get a real estate agent to help them find a home, get into homes to, to see them, while a listing agent is one that offers the house for sale on behalf of their client, the seller. And <clears throat> these properties are the ones that we see online that are on the what's so called the multiple listing service or the MLS. And that data is propagated out into the, all the real estate sites that you're familiar with, such as Zillow, Redfin, Realtor.com and, and you know many others and all the brokerage uh, sites like Remax and, and others. Uh, so uh, on the buyer side, a buyer will engage with a, a uh, licensed real estate agent who is a realtor uh, to show them homes, to find them homes that match their criteria of what they would like to potentially buy. Uh, the buyer's agent will uh, sort through the properties and offer to uh, show uh, the buyer any houses that they want that that might match their criteria and uh, what's going to change is that you are going if you are a buyer you are going to have a conversation with your realtor that maybe uh, you did not experience the last time you purchased the house now if you're the first time home buyer this is uh, this is going to be very seamless to you if uh, you have uh, done a transaction in the last few years uh, the way your agent engages with you in that conversation of uh, getting you onboarded to go and view homes, that conversation is probably going to be different than what you remember. And you as a buyer will be required to sign some paperwork that discloses how the, how the agent is going to be compensated for the professional services that they provide for you. Uh, and now that this didn't always take place, but uh, in the past, uh, but this is a just a new rule, a new law, a new regulation uh, that requires all buyers to sign a document that discloses how the buyer's agent is going to be compensated. And in some cases, uh, you are going to be asked to pay the commission uh, out of your side of the transaction, and that could be contingent, if you will, on whether or not the seller uh, is offering uh, compensation to the buyer's agent. And so I think uh, that's probably going to stay in place. I think most sellers will continue to offer compensation to the buyer's agent, but it's not 100% um, it's not across the board that that will happen. And uh, in the cases where a seller does not offer compensation to the buyer's agent, uh, that could, um, it could reduce the number of buyers that will come and look at the property. Uh, and in other cases, it may not, but uh, if the seller is offering compensation to the buyer's agent, uh, that's a good thing from the seller's perspective because they are basically telling the world that our home is for sale and we are going to facilitate uh, the, the, um, the transaction and make it as easy as possible for buyers to come and view the home and send an offer. Now everything's negotiable when an offer is sent, a, a seller can counter offer and, and both parties can come take some time going back and forth coming to a specific agreement. Uh, so that's, go, that's going to continue to take place. That has always been part of a real estate transaction is a negotiation and offer and maybe a counter offer and, and a, a negotiation back and forth until both parties come to a, what we call a meeting of the minds get a uh, what's called a binding agreement or there are other terms that are used but um, a ratified agreement depending on what, which area of the country you are uh, they may be called something different but the house is under contract with legally binding on both parties to fulfill whatever terms of the agreement they, they both have agreed to and um, so the compensation that's paid to a real estate agent that's representing a buyer may have to come from the buyer's side which that is sort of a new thing. You know, theoretically, it could have always happened, and it, it, I, I've done transactions like that where the buyer has paid uh, for some or all the commission for the buyer's agent in the past, even before this new ruling went into effect. Uh, so that's that's kind of a thing uh, that has always potentially been there, uh, but now it is uh, uh, possibly going to be something that we see uh, more often. 
certainly what we're going to see is a uh, an agent negotiating with their client, the buyer, about the commission that's to be paid. And almost all buyer's agents are now uh, going to require the buyer to agree to pay a commission if the seller's if the seller or the seller's agent, the seller's broker, does not share any compensation with the buyer's agent. So in these cases, that could price out buyers from purchasing a home if they have to uh, come up with additional money to compensate the agent that they are using. Uh, but I think in most cases, like I, I mentioned, uh, sellers will continue to offer that. That way their house is marketed to the greatest pool of buyers who have agents that are out there and buyers can move forward with confidence making an offer uh, under terms that they understand clearly. Um, if the seller comes back and says, we're not going to pay any of that commission, uh, that could be the difference between a buyer just walking away um, or not. So uh, the, I think this will affect home prices that maybe are at the lower price points in whatever given market. Uh, here I'm in uh, Metro Atlanta, North Metro Atlanta, I'd, I'd say the, uh, the average and median price points are somewhere, you know, both, uh, both of those numbers are between the 425 and 450, maybe 460 range, somewhere in there. Um, uh, definitely over 400,000, maybe not quite over 450 in that range, depending on, on the particular location. Um, for the metro area, it might be slightly lower than that for in the low fours. Uh, but any, so any homes that are priced, I'd say below 400,000, and the typical pool of buyers that would be buying those types of homes are normally those that really cannot afford to bring additional money to the table to compensate their buyer's agent. So they're gonna be hurt the most if they decide that they don't want to use an agent, uh, they're going to have, buyers are gonna have a real headache in trying to make an appointment to go view a home. Um, you're not, buyers are not gonna have access to 100% of the properties that are available for sale because a lot of listing agents are just not going to facilitate that. It's not what they normally do. Uh, and then in other cases, it might be easy for buyers to get into the homes that they want to see without using an agent. But it's going to be a challenge. It's not going to be a very simple process. So buyers get a lot of value using a buyer's agent who do a lot of work behind the scenes and make arrangements and um, uh, to, to view homes and then can give you their, uh, representing you as a client, can give you their professional opinion about the house, about how to structure an offer, how to negotiate it, and uh, they, your buyer's agent is a, is a go-between between you and the seller, the agent that's representing the seller. Uh, so this is a good thing. Most buyers uh, are at a disadvantage if they try to negotiate a transaction unrepresented and speaking directly to the agent who's representing the seller. Uh, so it's really in the best interest of most home buyers to have representation. So anyway, I know this is controversial to some people. They think it's easy to buy and sell houses without agents. That's fine. I know a lot of investors and uh, commercial uh, people that specialize in commercial property. Uh, you know, but these are sophisticated uh, real estate uh, professionals. If they're not professionals, they have. Uh, extensive in experience buying and selling properties. Uh, I'm talking about investors and maybe an individual, it could be, that have sold many, many properties over the years um, and some investment properties and, and whatnot. You know, they're, they're a little bit more knowledgeable and can negotiate directly with a seller's agent. Uh, anyway, this is just to give you a little bit of background and maybe more than you uh, uh, thought you were taking on when you began this video. Uh, but you're going to have these conversations, whether you're uh, a buyer or a seller with your agent. And in the case of buyers, it's going to be a new conversation that most buyers, uh, if they've done a transaction before, will not be used to. Uh, for If you're a first time home buyer, like I said, uh, you're, you're just gonna have a conversation and you're not really gonna know or understand or need to know uh, what has changed in the industry unless you wanna take a deep dive into that. So that's all for now. If you have any questions about uh, real estate commissions, uh, compensate, compensating real estate agents for their professional services, whether you're a buyer or a seller or even another agent, and this is new to you because you're new to the business, feel free to call me, text me, or email me anytime. I do this business full-time uh, as an investor, as an agent representing buyers, as an agent representing sellers. I live in the residential real estate industry as a professional full-time.